Cynthia E. Bogus Volcha, Ismus Shakillian, and this is Hallowed Highlands. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Killian. Welcome to my channel. Um, today we are going to be talking about self-love and compassion. Um, I'm kind of on like a shadow work kick right now and this is an aspect of shadow work that, um, that I think a lot of us have a hard time with. Um, loving ourselves. You know, a lot of us are very good at loving and healing and being compassionate to other people. But um, when it comes to turning that love and compassion onto ourselves, we feel anything from guilt and shame to um, confusion to anger, all sorts of things. So I felt that touching on self-compassion or sorry, self-love and compassion was something that, you know, would really be beneficial to a lot of people. So well, let's get started. So first thing I wanted to talk about was gemstones. I love gems. I have a ton and... Um, it, it, I'm so sad that like I have a ton of gemstones, but for some reason, some of the ones I was going to show you for this video have disappeared. I have no idea where they are, so um, I will work with what I have. So the first stone I wanted to talk about is rose quartz, and my light is really bright, so there. Get this really pretty big piece, and I've got a little piece. I've got some other pieces laying around. These two are the most common. These are really good for self-love and compassion, uh, healing of the heart chakra. Um, they're also really good at helping you radically accept things that you cannot change um, while providing comfort and support. The next gemstone I want to show you is clear quartz. Clear quartz is great because it amplifies um, other crystals being used and um, it is really good for cleansing and for purifying and awakenings. It is also great for providing clarity and it is also a nurturing gemstone. So these are some pieces of clear quartz that I have. They're so pretty. All right, put these over here. So now we're gonna talk about Amazonite and I wish I could find my big piece of it. This is my little piece. So Amazonite is really great for self-compassion, for soothing and healing. It also boosts awareness of the self and um, empowers rational thinking, which can be really hard when we are bogged down by our emotions. The next stone that I want to show you is green adventuring. This one stimulates the heart chakra. It enhances self-love and love for others. Um, it reduces harsh criticism um, of ourselves and bolsters belief in yourself. This is also a great gemstone for forgiveness. Uh, citrine is the next gemstone. This one is great for overcoming obstacles. There we go overcoming obstacles, um, boost feeling, oh, sorry, I, um, coping with sadness. Uh, it's also great for devotion. So, you know, devotion to yourself, um, lost my place, encouragement, and it also boosts self-esteem. So carnelian is the next one. This one boosts, boosts feeling us uh, feelings of self-worth. It increases courage and confidence. It helps remove blocks of the sacral chakra, um, which will enable you to be more sensual and to put you in touch with your senses and improve your ability to feel pleasure, which can be hard when, when you're dealing with things like uh, depression and anxiety. Uh, the sacral chakra is also the creative energy center. So you may find that working with this gemstone helps you get more in touch with your creative abilities. Amethyst is the next gemstone, and this one is great for self-love. Let's not drop it. This one's great for self-love. It connects you to your higher self, your divine self, um, and really helps silence that monkey mind telling you that you're no good and this and that. Um, it can also be really good for guidance, releasing shame, um, and letting go of negative feelings. 
Amethyst is also a powerful stone for recovering addicts. So I wanted to include it in this because self-love and compassion is something that um, recovering addicts really need to drill for themselves. Um, and I speak from experience as I am a recovering addict. I use uh, Amethyst in a lot of my stuff because it, it helps me. It really does help me um, stay strong in my sobriety. Uh, the next gemstones, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, samples to show you, but we have aquamarine, which is really good for self-love, self-compassion, coping with loss and grief. Um, it's a healing stone, and it's also great for um, coping with emotional pain. Rhodochrosite, I don't know if I'm even saying that right, uh, is great for compassion and self-love, healing, forgiveness, it's a powerful gemstone for trauma work. And then uh, Road Knight assists you in avoiding self-sabotage, which is something that a lot of us do. I know I do it. And self-destruction. It is a gemstone of self-love, forgiveness, confidence, and it helps balance the yin and yang energies in the body. The last gemstone I want to talk about is Alexandrite. And this one is really powerful for compassion for yourself, but also empowers shadow work and healing. So now we're going to get into herbs, and I honestly didn't go through my, my herb collection, um, but I have some of them in here. But anyway, whether you're looking to incorporate herbs in the tea you drink, supplements that you take, or the magic that you work, um, some great choices for, um, for working self-love and compassion are peppermint, rose, lavender, and eucalyptus, and I'm going to go over... I have my little script written out here, but um, peppermint reduces stress and promotes healing. Um, if you're experiencing any gastrointestinal discomfort due to your feelings, then you will probably find some relief from some peppermint tea. Um, rose promotes healing and relaxation, self-love and compassion, and it can also help you find balance. It also has a very nice scent to it. Lavender is another one that smells really great. Um, this one is soothing and relaxing. This herb actually has anti-inflammatory properties. So it can be helpful in, um, you know, help, helping you with, with pain as well. Like I personally like to smell lavender oil when I have a headache and really get that up in my head and help with the uh, inflammation. Um, lavender can also aid in reducing pain and promotes restful sleep. So then eucalyptus. Eucalyptus can help uh, reduce pain and is also a wonderful uh, treatment for respiratory concerns. Um, I know for me personally, I have asthma and when I've been really sick, I take my eucalyptus oil in the shower with me so that way I can really get that steam and the eucalyptus into my airways. Um, Let's see, and I, and I said in here, it's especially helpful for those of us with asthma, um, especially as asthma is oftentimes worsened by stress, anxiety, things like that. So you can also incorporate numbers um, into your self-compassion and self-love work. You can, um, I'm, I'm gonna go over three numbers that are really great for self-love and compassion, but um, you can work numbers into how many candles you work with. You can inscribe the numbers into the candles and then meditate on them. Um, you can incorporate them by drawing the numbers onto slips of paper and adding them to a witch bottle. Um, you can also burn the piece of paper to activate it. There's a lot of different ways that you can use, that you can use numbers. So five is the first number I wanted to talk about. Five is really great for freedom to make change. Um, it bolsters decision-making abilities and uh, adaptation. It also draws upon the power of the five elements. So six. Six is all about love and compassion. This number is greatly healing. Um, it's creative and also harmonious. And then the last number I wanted to list was number nine. Nine is compassionate and selfless love for all, including yourself, uh, boost patience, and it also may aid you in accepting your full self, and that includes your shadow self. So it's, it's, it can be very key in self, uh, or sorry, shadow work.
Next is sigils. And I do apologize before I show you this. I um, I have the little sigils that I drew for this on in my notebook. And uh, on top of it, I had notes on what yarn I was going to buy. <laughs> so you'll probably see that in a minute. But you can create a sigil for self-love and compassion and then use it in so many different ways. You can carve it into a candle. Um, you can, uh, to activate them, you can meditate on the candle from there, soak up the energy that it emits, and visualize yourself being um, more loving and compassionate towards yourself. Um, I totally jumped to the next section when I said that. Um, but, but you can add, uh, I already said that. So I'm going to show you, these are little sigils that I came up with just on the fly for I love me. And this one down here is obviously the most simple. It's just me inside of a heart. But you can create different sigils and then you can carve them into candles. You can, um, like I said, put them on little pieces of paper and add them to your witch bottle. You can paint it onto the bottle. Um, you can burn it in a cauldron or some other fire safe um, space. <laughs> Um, and then that kind of goes into candles. Um, with candles, you can use sigils. You can also carve runes into them. Um, you can dress them with different oils and herbs, depending on, um, you know, your intent, which here is self-love and compassion. Uh, let's see. One thing you can do also with, with the candle is meditate on the candle after you've, you know, dressed it and carved and done all that and visualize yourself being more loving and accepting of yourself. You know, really paint a picture of what that looks like. So moving on, um, altars. You can set up a self-compassion and love altar. And actually Megan over at Round the Cauldron, um, she did a video recently on um, a self-love and compassion altar that she made for herself in honor of her birthday. And um, the altar was beautiful and she created it as a sacred space for her to like reconnect with herself um, and to feel love and compassion for herself. Uh, it was a place where she could join her spirituality with her self-care. And I highly suggest that you make one too. And actually I'm working on one myself now. I, I totally loved her idea and I was like, yeah, I need that. <laughs> um, deities. You can include deities in your self-love and compassion work. This is a great way to add power to your work. Uh, and then also it's a great way to bond with the deities that you work with. Make sure that if you are asking them for support, that you're also giving them something in return to say thank you. Um, whether it's their favorite flowers or herbs, food or drink, or something that maybe you've made, your time and your effort even. Um, one of my favorite ways to serve my the deities that I follow is by doing things like this, by teaching. I love to, to give my time to the deities that I work with. So I personally work with the Irish and uh, Norwegian pantheons of gods. And um, when I need to be met with love and compassion and understanding, I personally go to Freya. She is a goddess of war and death, of save and beyond, but she's also a goddess of love. Her and I have been working together and deepening our bond for years now. And, um, you know, she is the one that I feel most comfortable going to when I need love, compassion, understanding, and guidance. So work with your, your deities. If you don't work with any deities, that is okay. Um, I go, I think I, I, went into that in another video, or yes, the 11 things that I wish I had known when I was a newbie. It's okay to not work with the deity. So if you don't, just skip that section. Ta uh, talismans and amulets are also super helpful. Talismans are items that are normally inscribed with a message, sigils, runes, or other symbols um, to bring the wearer protection, direction, um, and more depending on the message and the symbols used on the talisman. A pendant with a pentacle surrounded by runes is a good example of a talisman. Amulets are very similar to talismans, however, they do not have inscriptions. So a good example of an amulet would simply be a gemstone pendant. So just wearing this on a necklace is an amulet. 
uh, wear and carry your talismans and amulets that you've created around um, and sorry created around the concept of boosting self-love and compassion this is a great way uh, to choose a gemstone um, that the, the vibrates with the energy that you want. So again, any of the gemstones that we went over in the beginning of this, and there are other gemstones that are great for, for self-love and compassion that we didn't go over. Witch bottles. So I already showed you this one a little bit. This was the grief, um, the coping with grief witch bottle that we did in another video. Um, witch bottles are a great way to work your magic no matter what your intent is. Um, they come in different um, sizes, shapes, and colored glass. Um, I used the heart shape one for the grief bottle, and honestly, I would love to use another uh, heart shaped bottle for my self loving compassion, which bottle that I want to make. Um, let's see. So, so actually, I, I mentioned in here, I did a video a few months ago um, on making this, this uh, grief witch bottle, so I'll try to link it up, up there somewhere. Uh, if I can remember. <laughs> uh, you can also incorporate uh, with your witch bottle things like ribbons, charms, um, paint. You can paint them, paint a pretty picture on it, or paint runes or numbers on it. Um, you can add herbs, gemstones, oils, uh, ocean water, moon water, anything that you want um, to, to add to it that, that will help you with your self-love and compassion. And before you start adding stuff into your bottle, one thing that I like to do is to take a stick of Nag Champa and I like to stick it up in the bottle and cleanse the bottle first to kind of set that space as sacred before I start adding things. If you'd like to wear your witch bottle, uh, you've probably seen that there, there are some really cute bottles out there. They're really tiny. So you can make mini versions and wear it on a necklace or you carry it in your pocket, put it in your purse, your backpack, whatever. All right, moving on to pouches and I think it's sachets, sachets, I don't know, don't make fun of me, I can't say words. <laughs> Another great way to carry your magic with you um, is through the use of pouches and, um, and sachets. So this one right here is my, I've shown this one in uh, other videos, this is my pouch that I personally use for a lot of different things. Um, I'm pretty secretive about what is in this one in particular, but I like to wear it. And then also when I sleep, I sleep with this under my pillow. <clears throat> um, you can choose herbs and gemstones that correlate with your intent of boosting your love, love and compassion for yourself. Um, you can add sigils on paper, maybe even affirmations on paper. Uh, get creative. Fill your pouch or your sachet with items that will help you feel more loved and help you feel more compassion for yourself. Everyone's is going to look different. After making your pouch, you can wear it. You can carry it around with you. Or like I said, put it under your pillow when you sleep. Um, these also make these and witch bottles also make great uh, decorative pieces <laughs> like just laying around. They look beautiful. Um, and so if you're kind of like a little may, maybe in the broom closet or maybe a, kind of halfway out, um, you can have these things on display and be like, oh, it's just decor. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on into self-care. Self-care can be really hard, especially when you're triggered. Um, but I wanted to go over just a few little things that you can do for yourself. One, take care of your basic needs. So that means if you're thirsty, drink some water or drink, hopefully water, drink something if you're thirsty, eat if you're hungry, if you're tired, sleep. Um, you know, take, just take care of your needs. And that goes into self-soothing as well. Use your senses to soothe yourself. So a uh, sense that you find relaxing or, um, maybe, um, I like my cats right there. Um, when I'm really stressed out, I really love to hold my cat and pet her and feel that softness of her fur. It really is relaxing. Coping skills. Make sure that you have a whole bunch of coping skills on your, you know, in your arsenal and make sure that they're positive ones because there are negative ones out there. We all know this. Things like alcohol and drugs, those are negative. You know, yeah, they help you feel a little bit better for a little bit and then you usually come crashing down. So make sure that your, co your coping skills are positive and make sure you have a list of them. Um, there's actually a... Um, website that I'm going to put in the description 
and they have 99 different coping skills listed. I talked about this in my shadow work uh, video and probably several other videos that I've done. Also take time out for yourself and this can be, you know, spend time on your hobbies, meditate, stretch, do yoga. My dog is uh, barking in her sleep. <laughs> uh, other physical activity. Consider making affirmation cards. So these, a lot of people are like, oh, that sounds dumb or uh, that sounds cringy or whatnot. It is very cringy, especially at first, especially when you go in front of a mirror and you're saying these affirmations while looking at yourself in the mirror. But I promise you, I did that for like two months solid where every day I went into the bathroom and I read out the affirmations while looking at myself in the mirror. And at first it was almost unbearable. It was cringy. It was awkward. It was uncomfortable. But when we're uncomfortable, we grow. And um, I eventually was able to start saying the things on the affirmation cards, one, without even having to look at the card, but two, really feeling it and believing it. So practice affirmations. Um, let's see. Balancing time with friends and family with alone time. Make sure that even if you are more extroverted and you like having people around that you are taking time out for yourself and that you're taking time to just kind of be alone. Um, there are things that we can get done when we're alone that are much harder to do when we are around other people. And that is like our self work, our introspection and shadow work. Pray and meditate. I cannot stress this enough. Um, and, and again, if you if you pray and you are asking for something, please remember to thank whoever you're praying to and give them an offering of some sort. The last thing that I wanted to go over was moon phase. So syncing with uh, not only the moon phase, but syncing with just the flow of the, the universe can really help you with your self-love and compassion. So during the new moon, this is a really great time to set your intentions and to take time to perform introspection or looking deep within yourself and really getting to know who you are. The waxing crescent is a good time to manifest and to start acting on the intentions that you, you set during the new moon. The first quarter is a great time to strengthen your commitment to your goals and really build on them. Uh, the gibbous moon is great for coping and expressing your feelings as they may be very intense at this time. <laughs> very common. Uh, visualize your goals and maybe even plan the steps that are, are needed to reach those goals. Let's see, I totally lost my space. Um, oh, and attracting what you want. Now the full moon is great for all sorts of types of magic and spiritual work. Emotions are very potent at this time. Um, so you may need to, you know, take some time to really feel them and process them um, at this time. Let's see. Manifestation and personal power are also two areas that you can focus on during the full moon that you may find even more powerful at that time. All right. So waning moon. Focus on pushing things away from you or releasing things that are no longer serving you. Third quarter, let go again. If whatever is not working, let that go. Don't do that anymore. And free yourself of anything that is weighing you down. And lastly, the waning crescent. Focus primarily on your own healing, rest, and reflect. So thank you for being here with me today. It was a joy to have you. And thank you to my patrons over at Patreon. Uh, you guys rock. And without you, I wouldn't be able to do my YouTube. So I really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join me and Psychic Medium Natasha for a live talk show tomorrow on Instagram, we're going live at 1 and we're going to be talking about shadow work. So feel free to drop by, ask your questions, and hang out with us. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this video in the comments too. Um, and also I'd love to hear what kinds of questions you, you have in general. What, uh, what topics would you like me to cover in my videos? I really want to make content that you want. Um, and then quickly going back to the live tomorrow, um, if you have any questions about shadow work that you would like answered during tomorrow's live, please feel free to drop them below in the comments. Um, I would love that. I know Natasha would love that too. And um, I'll also link Natasha's uh, YouTube in the description.
If you'd like to do some shopping, head over to hallowedhighlands.com. I've got lots of awesome stuff over there. And then if you would like access to in-depth teachings, psychic readings, behind the scenes, and discounts, you can sign up for my Patreon. I have two tiers, a $5 tier and a $10 tier. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have for today. But I love you guys. Take care. Please take care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.